Hi there, welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new laser engraver. And this one, unlike the others I've looked at before that were open rail systems, is a closed system. And it's called that simply because everything goes inside. When this lid is lifted up, you can see everything that's in there and you can put in whatever you want to engrave. And let's take a look at some of the differences. For one thing, it doesn't use a honeycomb bed. It uses these two sets of rails. They'll go down in there. And this is the power supply for it. One of the things it comes with that most of the open type don't come with is a rotary roller. So this is all ready to go. I just need to set it in there. It comes with this little riser so that you can lift up the far end of something that might be too heavy and want to tip down. And this is the cable that will connect this inside the laser. Another thing it comes with that's very handy is an integrated air assist. So you don't have to buy one separate and it will be turned on every time you turn on the machine. There's the, the hose for that, of course. Also, it has a Wi-Fi antenna. Now, this one does not run on light burn that you see here, as most of them do. But I'm told eventually they are going to have it working with that. Right now, it has its own, it has its own software system, and I'll show you that pretty soon. All right, there's a cable to hook it up to your laptop need that when you want to use that software. And one of the things that's integrated in this is a fan inside to vent out all of the smoke and toxic gases that might be in there. And this sits on the back and then connects to this hose. It's a three inch hose. And I believe it's about six to 10 feet long. And I'm guessing because I have not opened this up to see that yet. So now having shown you most of the things that are involved with this, Let's take a look at the back here, and I'll show you how things are connected. Working from the right, we've got the connection for the Wi-Fi antenna. We can screw that on there, lift it up out of the way. Then we have the vent. There's a fan inside there, and it's going to vent the smoke and toxic gases out of there. And this just sits on there like that. And then the three inch hose, of course, goes on here. I have a 50 foot long four inch hose that I purchased to use with a different laser engraver enclosure. I've never got around to putting that enclosure together yet, but now that I've got this, I decided to 3D print this fitting so that I can put my hose over there and I'll be able to run it outside that three inch hose just was not going to make it. So I think this is going to help a lot. Next thing we have is the USB plug. So that will go in there and then the other end will go over to the computer. Next we have the power input. So that will go in here, just like that. We have the on off switch. Next thing is for the air assist pump. And this is the power for that. Okay, that goes in there. And then the hose for the pump will go into this quick connect. You just push that in. If you want to release it, you push in on that and it, out it comes. And that is everything that connects on the back. So now let's take a look at the inside of this machine. Sorry about the reflections in this lid, but when you lift it up, you can see in the back, there's a connection there for this cable to plug into. And the other end is going to go to the rotary roller right there. Now the roller itself, We'll sit down in the side. There's a pin to locate it in the right spot, which is right there. 
And then there are two screws that go into these two holes to hold it down. Those screws are right there. We can also now put these rails in here. Move this. Oh, I guess I can't move that over until this lifts up and I, I haven't figured out how to do that just yet. Another thing I can show you is that there is a pan in the bottom that I can push out, I think. Guess who's new to this? All right, there's a handle down here on the bottom that lets you draw this out so that you can take anything, little pieces that have been cut and take it out of there. Now, if I put the camera in the right spot, you'll be able to see the handle. I can pull this right out of there and empty it. All right, I guess I'm going to have to turn this on to get that other rail in there. So let's carry on to powering this up and see just what's going to happen. I'm not sure if I need to use the software to lift that module up or what's going to happen. Now, the only thing I have plugged into this machine is the power cord. So I'm turn on the power switch here. Well, sounds like there's life there. Oh, I think I need to push this button on the front. <laughs> oh, cool. That is very cool. Got to like this so far. Now the maximum height of anything you can print with this is 140 millimeters. Holy cow, that's cool. All right, I'm going to put that camera back there in a minute, but first I want to show you, there's the camera that is used to operate this machine. And it's an autofocus unit. I have no idea how that works. But let me put the camera back here. Well, you probably don't really care that much. I'm just going to put these rails back in here. And I believe we are ready for whatever the next step is. <laughs> probably obvious, but if I haven't mentioned it, this orange shield on here will keep people from blinding themselves by looking in there. And also when it's running, if you lift this lid up, it instantly stops. And apparently when you close this, after having done that, it'll start again right from where it stopped. Holy cow, this is a brilliant machine. Now let's take a couple of minutes and see if it's going to run as well as they claim. Turned off the power, it did not lower this down, so I guess that'll be a software issue. Huh, I wonder what pushing that button again would do. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Oh, all fired up again. All right, I will be back. This is a view of the software window. Now I'm going to refresh it. I put a piece of two millimeter basswood in there. So this should refresh and show that. There it is. Now I'm going to upload an image. I've chosen this one. It's a fairly complex one. I have not used it. Uh, okay, I got to scale this where we'll change that to 100 millimeters, roughly four inches. Place it on here. Now let's refresh that again. Okay, so now we're going to click on start. Oh, I need to click on autofocus first. So that's going to take the camera over. I'm not sure if that's showing up, but there is a red dot down there that it's using to focus with. After it focuses, it moves to the side, and now I can click Start. Once it's ready, there we go.
Now it says it's going to take 23 minutes and 23 seconds to process. That's not the entire engraving, that's just the processing of it. So we will see just how long it actually takes. Now I push the button to start it. And away we go. I will speed this up dramatically and I'll be back when it's finished. All right, I'll let this shut down and then we'll take that out. All right, let's just take that out of there now and take a look at it. Well, I think that came out just beautifully. I'm just going to take uh, compressed air, blow any char that might be on there off and we'll take another look at it. All right, I'm not sure if you see a great deal of difference on there, but I am really impressed with the accuracy. Oh, that is just beautiful. All right, I'm going to try a piece of stainless steel. Now everything about this machine has said that it's for wood, basically, but it doesn't say you can't do stainless steel, so let's give it a shot. I am going to put a small 20 millimeter square image of that cap that I used last time I did a video. See what it comes out like. It's going to be at 100% power and 3000 millimeters per minute. So let's just start this and we'll see what we end up with. All right, let's see how that looks. Well, I think that came out just wonderfully. Wasn't expecting much at all. And I'm going to try it again. Slow the progress down a little bit. And we'll see what it does. It makes it darker. I'm just going to move that same thing over to beside it. And I'll be back when it's finished. All right, that's definitely much darker. Shows up very well. And again, the quality is just impeccable. Very happy with that. And I believe that was done at 100% power and 900 millimeters per minute or 15 millimeters per second. The makers of this machine claim that it will cut through 10 millimeter thick wood. So I've placed a piece of maple in there that is 10 millimeters thick and I'm going to attempt to cut through this at 240 millimeters per minute, 100% power and two passes. So let's see what happens here. I will click the start on the software and then the start button on the front of the machine and away we go. Well, it would appear that it did the job. Let's take a look here. Cut it off very cleanly. Quite happy with that. All right, another test that it's passed. Now I realize there is more to this than I have shown you, but I've just run out of time, to be honest with you. 
So I don't have time to show you the rotary roller right now. If you're really interested, let me know and I will try to put together a video showing just that. But I'm going to conclude this with pros and cons, all right? And stick around, the best one is saved for last. So I'm going to start with what I don't like about this. And there's only one thing. <laughs> when this showed up, this top was down about here. I can't figure out how to get it to go back down there. So I guess I have to contact We Create and just find out what to do. It's got to be a simple thing I just haven't found. But I'm going to give you a list of the things I do like. And I couldn't memorize them all, so I've made a list here. Bear with me. First of all, the included air assist, I love that. It's a great thing. The included rotary roller, I didn't show you, but I really like that fact. The slat bed, instead of a honeycomb bed having those slats in there, just makes perfect sense. Should be easy to clean compared to the honeycomb beds, and I like that. The smart camera, what a great idea, and it works so well, beautifully. Now, I didn't mention this before, but there is a 0 0.01 millimeter accuracy, and that is hard to beat with any kind of machinery. The enclosure, the fact that you don't have it open so that people can get blinded when they walk in the room, a good thing to have, in my opinion. The 20 watt diode, it's plenty good enough for what I want to do with this machine, and I think for most applications and for most, most users, it will also be excellent. The auto lift, what an awesome idea. As soon as it finishes, it lifts up, gets everything out of the way. You have to like that. Now, without the slat bed, you can do 140 millimeters thickness of wood. Uh, I could put a small bowl in there if I wanted to. With the slat bed, you can do 100 millimeters. That's four inches. That's plenty for most things you want to do. There's a 10,000 hour lifespan to this machine. Really good. Am I saying I like this enough? I think so. There is a smoke purifier that's available as an option. So if you don't want to run a hose out through the door as I've done, that's a good thing to be able to get if you want it. Eye protection. Obviously, with the lid down, this lens, you can look through it and see what's going on and you don't have to worry about your eyes or wearing extra glasses. The emergency stop, a great safety feature. A $20 deposit for $500 discount. Now this is the last thing and for some of us it's the best thing. If you put $20 down as a deposit on this machine by October 15th, they will reduce the cost of this machine for you by $500. And how can you beat that? If you decide to do that, you can put your $20 deposit down. And if you decide after October 23rd that you don't want to order the machine, they will refund that for you. So that's quite a good thing right there. Well, there's not really much more I can say about this. I think I've covered everything pretty well. If you have any ideas of what else you'd like to see, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll come back for my next video. Between now and then, be safe. Have a great day in your shop. And if you haven't done it before, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. Share this with other people if you think someone out there, a friend of yours, might be interested in this machine. And I hope you'll come back, as I said. So take care. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.